Okay. Okay, so, so the topic is Christ's method of making disciples, basically. And God says, I will make you fishers of men. So you want to go to the Bible and see how God really do, um, do this, how, how he does this. It says, and he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. All right? God says he will do it, not we will do it. This is very important to understand. God says, I will make you fishers of men. So it is God's will for us to be um, soul winners. But God will make us soul into soul winners. He will train us. He will tell us what to do, how to do it. Right? He has a method. So I have a note here. It says, God will do it, not us. This is righteousness by faith and not by man-made works or methods. You know, many times people, they want to work for God, but without God. They want to work for God with their own way, not God's way. This is very important to understand. Okay, let's continue. So I have here, the way out of sin is to follow Christ. Now, the first thing for winning somebody to God is that you must be righteous. That's the first thing. You must have the righteousness of God. That is the first thing. So it says, the sin to follow, the way of the sin is to follow Christ. It says, joining him in his work for the salvation of men. This is his secret. So many people may have struggling with sin, struggling with sin and all these secret things or whatever they have. The way out of it is to join Christ in his work. And don't wait to become good before you join him. Come to him as you are, and he will make you into a soul winner and just by following him in his work the sin or whatsoever has its hold on you it will lose its power now let's continue here i want to show you this from the bible all this i'm telling you it is very scriptural i didn't made up anything so luke 5 8 it says we know the story with jesus in peter's ship when he um, worked the miracle for him to catch all those fishes so at the end of the miracle listen what happened it says when peter when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. So what did Peter recognize after Christ worked the miracle? He recognized that he was a sinful man. But what Christ told him? Well, if, if you read verse 10, he says, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. But in, um, but in Matthew 4, 19, he says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So when Peter cried out about the sins, about what was the solution to solve the problem of the sin? Christ says, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So the solution out of sin is to follow Christ. And where do Christ go? He walked in the path of righteousness, which is to um, do righteousness and to save others from unrighteousness. The next verse says, and they straightway left their nets and followed him. So how soon must somebody follow God who's struggling with sin? Immediately. The Bible says straight away. If you're struggling with sin, God is saying, follow me. I will make you fish of men. Right? So don't wait tomorrow and wait until you become good whatsoever. Come as you are and follow God. And God will make you righteous. Right? Remember, to be a fisher of men or to win men to Christ, you must be righteous. This is a fact. So I have here, first thing before 16, it says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. So here we find the secret of overcoming your sins is by following God in his doctrines and in soul winning. This is what God is saying. So making disciples, right? The Christ method of making disciples is first recognize your sin, your sinful, and follow Christ in his work. This is the first step. Okay, so now let's continue on from here. I have a quote I want to read, and then I'll use this quotation to do a case study on Peter, and you will see this is the way how God usually went people to himself and to his work. Christ method will give true success. This is the topic here. He says, Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. His method alone, not man's method. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired the good. He showed his sympathy for them. He ministered to their needs. He won their confidence. 
Danny Barton, follow me. You know, I grew up in the church. I read this quotation many times. And it was I feel a few years back, I decided that I am going to look in the Bible to see when and where the Christ did all of this, mingle with people, sympathize with them, uh, minister the need and want the confidence. Because I wanted to know how is it that Mrs. White knew this? I, I, I believe that she's a prophet, right? I believe that, that, that she saw it in a vision, but I wanted like to know where in the Bible she saw this. And you know, as I was searching, I look and I found it in the life of Peter. So Peter we will use to show you that all these methods here that was mentioned here, it is likely she saw it in the life of Peter from, from the Bible. Okay, so let's continue. Now, in the interest of time, we won't read the verses, but you can read the verses. I will remind you of what transpired in the verses. Now, the first thing, you remember after Christ fasted in the wilderness, he came out, he went into the, um, you no, know, after his baptism, he came out from the water, he went into the wilderness for 40 days, then out of the wilderness, um, John basically, um, well, before and after, John proclaimed Christ as the Lamb of God, we take it away the sin of the world. Now, in that event, there were some disciples who heard that and they started following Christ. And one of them also was uh, Peter. Okay, so the first time Christ met Peter was in John 1, 35 to 42. You can read there. Basically, Christ was mingling with them. What is the first thing you say to somebody when you want to get to know them or when you are mingling with them? You, you introduce yourself, right? You introduce yourself. He says, my name is X, Y, Z. What is your name, etc." The first thing Christ reached out to Peter and said, um, he basically named all of them. He says, you are Peter. And then he says, uh, I saw you uh, for the other one, Nathaniel. He says, I saw you under the fig tree. You are a true Israelite, et cetera. So he was basically mingling himself with them or he was introducing himself to them, all right? And we know this for a fact. For those people on here who are probably married or whatsoever, you know, the first initial step of getting to know your spouse or whatsoever was that you introduce yourself, right? So this is the first step when you want to be friends with somebody or when you want to, um, well, be friends and then go forward and our friends, etc. It is the same with when you are trying to win somebody to God. You introduce yourself. So this was the first thing Christ did. He was mingling with them, right? The second time he met Peter was in Luke 4, 38 and 39. Now, you remember the story. He had just came out of the synagogue and he went into Peter's house and Peter had his mother-in-law that was sick, which means Peter had a wife. So she was sick. So we know what Jesus did. Jesus sympathized with them and ministered to his need. He had a need. He had a sick mother-in-law. He sympathized with her and he healed her. And the Bible says after he healed her, she got up and she started ministering to them, meaning serving tables, etc. Right. So he's getting closer with, with Peter to win him. He hasn't called him yet to the work. So he's just doing his method of winning Peter. No, the final time was the time. He's going to call him now. No, the final time Christ met Peter, it was in Luke 5, 1 to 11. And the, 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 the uh, corroborating story is in Matthew 4, 18 to 20. Now, this story is very interesting. We can spend all day on it, but I, I can't, do, we, we won't do that. Now, there's something that I want to highlight from this story. Now, after Jesus... Uh, went to these other cities preaching. The Bible says he was walking by the Lake of Galilee and there were two ships. The Bible mentioned that specifically there were two ships. One ship was had, be had belonged to the sons of Zebedee, Zebedee. The other ship was Peter's ship. Now, out of these two ships, why did Christ choose Peter's ship and not the sons of Zebedee's ship? It was because he had begun a process on Peter that he needed to complete it. This is why I believe he went into Peter's ship because the Bible says there were two ships. He could have chosen the other one, right? But he was about to complete his work, his method on Peter to call him to his work. So we know this story very well. Basically, 
Peter was toiling all night. He didn't cut anything. Remember, he had a mother-in-law, which means he had a wife, which means he had family to provide for. So he was a failure in his career, basically. So he didn't know what to do. So Christ showed up in the ship as his helper, right? So Christ showed up in the ship. Christ says, okay, launch out a little from the shore. Christ taught the people. And at the end of it, Christ says, okay, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. So Peter knew that we know this from the spirit of prophecy. We learned is that in the daytime was not the best time to catch fish. At night was the best time. And at night, Peter had failed. So he had some amount of confidence in Christ to go out in the day to catch fish when he knew, when he knew he was an expert fisherman, when he knew that was not the time to catch it. So what that creates this confidence, the word of God creates faith. Christ had just preached to him. Christ had ministered his, to his needs before. So with all these evidence, faith was awakening Peter and confidence that he says, you know, I know this is not the time to catch fish, but I will trust him. He ministered to my needs. He's preaching the word of God. I believe him. For the word of God creates faith. I will do it. And the Bible says when he had this done, he enclosed a great multitude of fishes. That was a miracle because that was not the time to catch fish. So from seeing this miracle, the first thing that was awakened to him was that this man is the son of God. He is the Messiah. I am a sinful man. So he fell on at Jesus' feet, hard, broken, confessing his sins, and God saved him. And then God called him to his work. This is Christ's method. So the final time Christ met Peter, he won his confidence. And now he bid Peter, follow me. Right? So this method that Christ did is the same he wants to do for us. Christ wants to enter into our lives in order to give us true success. Right? True success this is what God wants to do. This is Christ's method. Now, as we go along now, I want to show you something else that Christ did for Peter. Remember Christ told him that he would make him a fisher of men? So I want to read this note here. It says, God fulfilled his promise to Peter and the apostle in a wonderful way. Now, this is the promise here, Matthew 4, 19. And he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So Christ is waiting to do the same for us today. Now, look at how God fulfilled his promise to Peter. You remember on the day of Pentecost? You remember that? Now, listen what it says about Peter. It says, then Peter stood up and with 11, raised their voice and said unto them, men and men and men of the Jews and all you who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and hear my words. So those who receive his word were baptized and they were added that day about 3,000 people. God says, I will make you fishers of men. This was the biggest catch in Peter's life, more than any catch that he made on sea. He caught, he caught the souls and hearts of men for Christ. Now, how did he do it? The, the, the verse 47 tells you, it says they were praising God, having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were to be saved. So who gave Peter the success? Who made him to win souls for him? It was Christ. So you see, God says, I will do it. And God did it. This is the same God wants to do for us today. God wants us to use his method. And his method will give us the success, not us. So we see that God has a plan for everybody. God has somebody for you to win for him. Follow his method, and God will give you the success, right? This is true success. To win people to Christ is true success than any academic achievement. The whole world of riches, the whole world of power and authority is not true success in comparison with winning at least one person to Christ. This is true success. This is what God is saying. Let's continue, because your career will come to an end when the world comes to an end riches will come to an end but those the power and authorities will come to an end but the persons or people that you want for christ you will see them eternally saved in the kingdom of god that is true success it lasts forever okay so 
let's continue here. It says, when Christ comes to home, what does he bring? Now, we see the method in the life of Peter. We want to look at this method a little briefly in the life of Zacchaeus. It says, and when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thine house. What? So Christ met Zacchaeus before us and Christ says, look, I want to stay in your house. What is he doing? He's mingling with him, you know. He's trying to get to know him. Same method. He's now working on Zacchaeus. Right? So it says, verse 19, we know the story. After Jesus came in, he talked to them, he preached, and etc. Zacchaeus was convicted of his sins again, just like Peter. After he was convicted of his sins, we know he must have exclaimed he's a sinful man because the Bible says that all those whom he had robbed, he paid them back fourfold. And then listen what Christ says. Jesus said unto them, this day is salvation come to this house. Praise God. Right? So it says, for as much as he is also the son of Abraham. When it says he's the son of Abraham, it means he's the son of faith, meaning he trusted in Christ for righteousness. Not necessarily was from the gene genealogy of Abraham, um, but he was the son of faith. Right? But I believe that he was from the genealogy of Abraham. Okay, so let's continue. It says, for the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. So when Christ comes at home, when he comes to people, what he does, he brings salvation. When is salvation? It is present today. It's not tomorrow. It's not in the future. It is today. And salvation is really not a day. It's a person. Christ was before himself. The resurrection is not a day. It is a person. Truth is not a theory. It is a person. The way is not a path. It is a person. Are you hearing? So this is what God is saying. Christ is using these objects from nature and from the natural um, laws of nature to point to himself. Everything is in him. That we know in the sun. So we see that when Christ comes at home, he brings salvation. So it, I have here, Christ wants to carry salvation to all homes on earth, beginning with our sports, so with your home sports. Are there, are there are people in your home? God wants to save them, right? But how he will do it through his method, right? Remember, we're looking at his method. is through the medical missionary work. This will bring salvation to the lost. The medical missionary work is what we'll do it. Okay, now briefly, as we go along, the medical missionary work will bring back the breath of life into the churches. So we're spinning off now from Peter, Zacchaeus, ourselves, now to the church of God. Do you believe the church is alive or is the church dead or dying? What do you think? Quick question. Alive. Anybody? All right, do you believe the church is alive? Are you sure? It's alive. I mean, it's not perfect, but it certainly won't die. Uh -huh. So if I were to say to you oh. that, if, if I were to say to you that the churches are dying, would you believe what I'm saying or not? So yes, what about the baptisms? Huh? What about all those baptisms? Well, baptism is not necessarily a sign that the church is alive. It's not necessarily a sign. It's a, it is the character and lives of the members mm -hmm. in the church is what shows whether the church is alive or not. Are we together? Can I, can I add? Yes, yes, you can add. I think in Revelation, didn't it say you're dead, but you think you're alive? In Revelation, it says that you see in church. So, yes, we can be dead thinking we are alive. Alive, yeah. The Bible says we think we're rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing. Really what that is saying is that we have become self-righteous. We think we have everything under control. We are alive when really we are dead. Right? This is what God is saying. Right? So, I want to show you that in, in, in a special sense, the churches are dying. They are dying for want of the message of righteousness 
by faith. The church is loaded with sin. I'm telling you straight. I am. I. I didn't bite my tongue. I didn't muffle my words. I, I. I tell you straight. The church is loaded with sin. The same sins that people are practicing in the world. The church is in a tone. Who is out saying that? No, we. We are. We are taking no. God is speaking. But I'm calling people sin. This is not what I'm doing. I'm just highlighting this. Yes, yeah? not pointing out anybody or anything. No, listen now, but listen, listen. God has a plan. God is going to show how he's going to redeem things. Another thing, I, 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 I want to I wanna show you something too from the churches. Many times the church says, okay, we're going to share the book Great Controversy. What they will do, they will show you, they will promote the book Great Controversy from the pulpits and all these things. But when you go out, when is the day for the program or whatever it is, it doesn't be, it is not the book, the great controversy. They give you the great hope. I do not know if you notice that, but it is a it is a trick and it is a deception I've seen. We they know. know the, the, yes. Yeah, they, mm. they, it is a trick. They will show you, this is the book we need to get this book out to everybody. The world needs this book. They will show you the great controversy. They will put it up on the stage and everything and so but when the people are going out to evangelize, you will see the great hope you find going out in these in the intros to the people. It's a deception. But God is not sleeping. And their members, they, they are they are faithful members who are who are seeing this. And but God is not asleep. God is alive, right? But this is something I want to highlight to you. Okay, so. The medical missionary work will bring back the breath of life into the churches. So if the church doesn't have the breath of life, what is our condition? Dead. Spiritually dead, then, as the sister said earlier. Dead. Dead. Dead in sin and trespasses. That's what God is saying. So this one is, it says, to my ministering brethren, I would say, prosecute his work with tact and ability. Set to work the young men and young women in the churches. Why? Because the young men and women are tempted in sin. But it's not saying necessarily they are in sin. But if you want to save them from sin, you better get them to work. Remember, God says, follow me, and I'll make you righteous. So let's continue now. It says, combine the medical missionary work with the proclamation of the authority and just message. Make regular organized effort to lift the churches out of the dead level into which they are fallen. So the church alive or dead. It says, and how? And have remained for years. This was in our day when she was alive. How much more now? It says, send it to the church workers who will set the principle of health reform in their connection with the authority and the message before every family and individual. Why are you sending them into the church? I thought the church would be going out into the world. There's a workforce that needs to be done for the church before they go out into the world. Many people, I'm not attacking, just please understand what I'm saying. Many people run to save people when themselves are unsaved, right? So it's trying to show us that we need for this righteousness of Christ before we go to operate the people. It says, encourage all to take a part in the work for their fellow men and see if the breath of life will not quickly return to these churches. This is what I say. No, we want to analyze this quotation and keep him beyond Christ's method, right? No, first thing for us. Let's continue here. One of this Bible verse. It says, Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray he therefore the Lord of the harvest, and he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Who owns the harvest? Man, organization, president, priest, or kings, who owns every human being upon the face of this earth. Christ is Lord of the harvest. So he says, pray to me and what you will do. Will we do it or will he do it? He said, and he will send for laborers. Righteousness, I think God will do it. We are the past God to do it. Now, this, is, this makes sense. Why it makes sense? Because we don't own nothing. God owns everything. So we need to ask God to do what he promised to do we need to ask god for permission to have these things in other words you see what i'm saying so if we want to win others for christ these people belong to christ so we need to ask christ to win them for us now think of it this way now there's a whole there's a whole 
chest full of light here that I want to add, add to this. Have you noticed in the Old Testament, before all those people went, the Old Testament people went to do anything for God, they always asked God before. David, for example, I'm just trying to remind your story. David, for example, before he went to take any city or whatsoever, he would say, God, have you given, if I go up, will you give this city into my hands? Why he asked like that? Because God owns everything. We own nothing. When God went to Joshua, God says, get up and go over this Jordan. Why? Because I have given it into your hands. We can't take nothing except God give it to us. John 3, 27. A man can receive nothing except give it to him from heaven. This is what we need to understand. Everything belongs to God. The hearts of men, every human being belongs to God. We can't go win nobody for God. God must do it. We need to tell him, Lord, this is your promise. You promise that you will win these people to yourself. Please go and do it. And God will bring these people into church to carry the work forward. So this is the point that I want you to see here. Christ method alone of doing things. No, analyzing the quotation. This one is what I said. She tells you in that brief quotation, who are the workers? She says, set to work, young men and young women in the churches. Then she tells you where are the workers. Remember we are praying for the harvest, the Lord of the harvest and poor laborers. So God is telling you where to find them, who they are, where to find them. So who are the workers, young men and young women? Not excluding the adults, um, more people, people brethren who are more advanced in age, not excluding them also. It tells you where they are in our churches. It tells you what is their work. Combine medical missionary work with the proclamation of the third angel's message. This is Christ's method alone. And then it tells you the true success that will follow the work workers and see if the breath of life will not quickly return to the churches. That's God's method there. So get the young men and women in your churches, put them to do medical missionary work for King Dorian's message, and the church will receive the breath of life and become a living vital power in the earth. So here we have here, Christ is a true way. Christ is a way of salvation and true success. So Christ's method alone will give true success in reaching the people. Save and mingle with men as one who desire the good. Show the sympathy for them. Minister to the needs. One the confidence. Then he bought them. Follow me. So as we come to the close here, Christ is calling you and I to follow him using his method. It says knowledge, benevolence, eloquence, gratitude, and zeal are all aids in the good work. They are only aids in the good work. They, they, it is not the life of the work. It says, but without the love of Jesus in the heart, the work of the Christian minister is a failure. The work of anyone who ministers to Christ, without the love of Christ, they can't, they, it's a failure because God is love. And the medical missionary work is what it, it, it has, it brings with it the, the love of God. Right. So I have a note here before we close here. It says medical missionary work carries with it the love of God. And without it, all that we do is vain. Why? For whatsoever we do without the love of God is sin. Did you know that? You can be the most brilliant pastor or person on the face of this earth. Without the love of God. In you know, brilliance is sin. And you may not be the most brilliant person on the face of this earth. You have the love of God, it fulfills all things. Paul says, love fulfills the um the uh, love of God. And what is conditional lady? They say it says she needs the gold tried in fire, which is faith and love. She loved the love of God. It says, For God is love, it is his character. So if you use 
every other means to win people, but not the character of God, which is love. It, 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 it's, a, it's a farce, according to the spirit of prophecy. It's a deception. It says, so whilst all the world is following the beast, Revelation 33, let us follow the lamb wherever he goeth in his method of making disciples through the medical missionary work, Revelation 44. So there are two classes of people. The one who are following the lamb, Revelation 44, they, they are following him in character, in work, in life. And the others who are wandering after the beast, they are following the system of men, which is leading to death and destruction. When it says wonder in Revelation 33, it doesn't mean to stop and stare. It means to follow in life, practice, and character. How I know this? Is because when you are uh, when you read um, there's a quotation in the spirit of prophecy. It says that um, uh, Ms. White commented on this verse, and she says that every Sunday they rob God of His time. Every Sunday the world follows the the, the papacy by robbing God of His time. So. This wandering is not stopping and staring at the papacy or when the papacy appear in some country, all the cameras are on it and people say, look, all the world is wandering up. No, it doesn't mean that. Every Sunday in practices, they are following the system of sin. Every day when men believe they can save themselves, and they don't need God to give them or can save themselves by the works or saving their sins. They are following the beast. It's talking about character. This is what it's talking about. So while, while men are trying to concoct man-made methods of evangelism, right in this church, I, I tell you straight, yes? <laughs> they are following not God, but men. God says, the work will fail them in the day of testing. God only has one way of doing his work. You see how it was done. And this is how God did it unto the end. The medical missionary work with the authority and just message with the love of God is the way to do God's work. So friends, this is Christ's method of winning people. And I hope that God bless you. And God give his spirit to you. And they encourage you to obey and do what he says he wants you to do. If you do anything outside of what God says it must be done, no, it is a sin. And God will not accept it. You'll only accept his perfect work. So let's pray. Let's go. Say, Father in heaven, we thank you for your words. We ask for your Holy Spirit to go with it. You whose words gather the fishes of the sea and to beat this net, may you gather the hearts of men into your truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Brother Clement. We are so blessed with this study. And I think for me, what I'm, I'm picking out two things. Number one, number one, God's method alone. Alone. If we try to do it any other way, it will not work, all right? Number two, if we do God's work without the love of Christ is a sin. That is powerful. Do we see this on a daily basis? We, 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 we can't even say because it's only God who checks the heart, but the Bible says that we shall see them by their fruits. So, when we um, endeavor to do God's work for the sake of being seen, for the sake of I know it better, if we do God's work with attitude and trying to lessen other people and elevate others, God is alone is the one who knows the motive the and, the, is, and yes. the heart and the heart that is connected with him. And I like when uh, the quotation says that if we try to do the work without um, God's love in us, it will not work. It will not go far. 
it will not yield that which is supposed to yield. It, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't convert the people. It will bring no. them in. Yeah, uh -huh. it will make everybody excited, happy, and everything. So, but it won't convert them because Absolutely. They wanna, yeah. So they those are takeaway, and those are major, major takeaway for us as Christians. We really need to watch our motives. Who has called us? It is very important. Very, very important. Even when you get to a point where the elder is asking you to do something, the pastor is asking you to do something. Have you been called? Do you feel the passion? We need to check and we need to go back on the drawing board between us and God himself to check even the, those hidden drops of, of tendencies that we... It's not obvious, but God knows it. I recently have to go back to continually ask God, help me, show me those things that I can't see within myself so I can be able to change and do your will fully. I, need, I think at this time where we are standing in the test of time as Christians, this is what we ought to do. Be clear with God. Lay it over, pray over it. Yeah, be honest. Fast, yeah, fast, true. Fast if you have to be honest with yourself. Yeah, exactly. Because it's, it's only you who can be honest. I can't do it for you because I can't see it. Okay, and I, 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 I cannot. Well, I cannot give you my power. It's only that power that comes from Jesus alone. So we need to have that one-on-one -on -one with Christ. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brother Clement. Yeah, that welcome. was powerful. Yeah, no, praise God. Uh, somebody wants to say something. Uh, con yes. Conil, Conil. But wait, be be before you say quickly, um, this quote, this is somebody just posting the... Okay, later I, I, I will address I'll that. do it. I did the quote. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll okay, we'll tell you quickly. This the quote, quote, is would, you what the quote I put is the work will be done in the field. Yeah. As Ellen White says, and thousands. And that's like when we go down to London, them marches, them protests, that's where it will be done. Yeah. But are you allowed near the stage? You're not. You're not allowed near the stage. You can give out books, but you're not allowed yeah. near the stage yet. Yeah. Yeah. We are, well, I, I will tell you, this quotation here is a repetition of the day of Pentecost. Basically, what she's showing you here is that, listen, just like how the rapidity of Pentecost took place, it's, it'll, it'll be low cry will be the same thing. But what caused Pentecost? Was it just this sudden preaching that just caused everybody to say, hey, I believe this? Like, no, it was Jesus three and a half years work previously that led to that rapidity at the end. At the end, they saw it with their own eyes. This man is the son of God. I want him. So it is a work that is being now little by little on these little meetings, preaching here and there, all over. And see, it is now bearing fruit. This is why it's called a harvest. The character is coming out now. It's a result of what was happened before. So this sudden spring of rapidity of, I'm, I'm contrasting this with when the church says this sudden numbers of people is a sign of righteousness. No, it, 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 that's not always the case. But then in this case here, is talking about a work that was done previously that led to this true conversion. Now, this sudden burst of numbers as there is there is a true the thing is so it there's a, this true line and then there's this false line. Some people say well, because of this sudden baptism of so many thousands of people is a sign that God is saying also is why it comes to that there is a multitude who are called coming into the churches which is even going out they, they they're going out they're coming in but it's not a sign of true uh conversion but here it's talking about true conversion which result as a result of a daily laboring little by little laboring uh, before that time come so that that's what that's what i want to address but no problem thank you for sharing uh conquer neil and then we have friday or something to say um yeah. Sister Hello. 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 Yeah, sorry, my, I wasn't able to unmute. <clears throat> yes, I just wanted to quantify and thank you very much for your presentation. And my intention is never to oppose the word of God. I, I'm not into that. But I just wanted to quantify the question you asked about the church dying. 
You see, I work with patients who have uh, diabetic foot problems and they can have a necrotic or a dying toe or even toes, but it doesn't mean the entire body is dying. Um, so you can amputate a toe, you can amputate half of a foot, you can amputate below the knee and the person still lives. So to say that the church is dying, you know, um, I, I, I wouldn't say that. You have to quantify whether it is the church or individuals, part of the church might be dying. And the text Matthew, uh, where Christ said, the gates of hell shall not prevail, Matthew 16, verse 18. You know, Christ will hope there will be a remnant of a remnant. There will be people. I see every week, I see the dying in the church. I see it. I see where pastors are baptizing people in erring. They're going to the water without erring, they come up with it. Yeah, I see it happening. I see they have concerts, even they, they had a big concert at one church in London. Um, two weeks ago, and there was this person talking about a, a choir, half Adventist, half non-Christian. How can you mix truth and error? How can you mix the church and dilute our beliefs? I see it every day happening in the church. In my church, I see it happening. So I'm not saying that the church isn't um, isn't dying. Well, you know, but aspects of it is. But there will always be a remnant of our remnant. There will always be God's true remnant people. The, the, the gates of hell will not overpower the church of the living God. And that's my point. Yeah, praise God. Okay, no, I, I, I want to address something quickly. This, this is not battling you. When Ms. White says the church is at dying, what she meant by that? Did you know what she meant by that? Do, do you know? Repeat the question, please. When Mrs. White read in the Spirit of Prophecy, when you read in Spirit of Prophecy, or when you read in Spirit of Prophecy, Mrs. White said the churches are dying. This was on my heart day. She said the churches were dying and so forth. What did she mean by that? What caused her to say something like that? Well, I believe, for me personally, I believe things, um, they are bringing in stuff inside the church, mm. which is unrelated to, um, to Christ. Yeah. Um, for ex just example, um, everything that's happening into the world are not taken into the church and make it seem normal. Mm. The, the, the songs that they sing, some of them are not of Christ. And if people, a mm. lot of people recognize the songs, they're not mm. of Christ. And there are, there are, there have been sung everywhere else, including some of um, the clubs too. Mm and they're bringing it into the church and thinking that it is a like a feel-good message mm -hmm. that the dress code and all these things are more taken into from the world into the church so the world the church is not impacting the world the world is not impacting the church yeah, yeah. and that makes you dying without realizing it that's my belief so much. That's the idea. If, I may okay. also, if i may also say something you know um, the church, we are the church, people are the church, and it's not a building, right? It's, it's not a building, uh, okay, and just good. like how that sister just said, we are straying away from the foundation of why God raised up this church. Uh, okay, and okay. a lot of times. When you, if you go on YouTube and you look for churches, mm -hmm. we are even trying to imitate mm -hmm. the worship styles of mm -hmm. other denominations. Okay. And we are straying from um, the reason for what God has called us for. So, um, we want to be in common, right? Yeah. And, and, and people are, because of the mm -hmm. messages that are being preached, Okay, People, you're hitting it on one day. Now being you know? comfortable okay. in our sin. Okay, very good. Now, when she said the church was dying, what was happening? The messages that God has given us to give to the people weren't being preached. The word of God brings life. Without it, it is death. It is the messages that God has given to this church is what is not being preached in this church. It's not this being is what is causing the church to die. This yeah, is why the members are in sin. This is what she mean when she said the churches are dying. The people don't live up to the messages. They don't even hear it. 
they don't hear it. People don't hear the messages. This is what is happening. And so we see that um, there's a whole not, but I'm telling you, how often do you go to church and hear the messages of righteousness by faith? Hear the messages of a God's way of healing. How often do you go here? You don't hear these things. No, the messages are not being preached. This is the sign that she's telling you the churches are dying. This is what God is saying. God is not more. God is, and, and when you look at the members, you can see they're dying spiritually and they're dying physically. Because you know, brother, when, when you go to like, when they have like health things or whatsoever, or health fears and so, you will see church members that show up. This is not a talking people, please. Church members show up for, for themselves to be, uh, get uh, healing. They, they, they're loaded with, with the, uh, the sickness and all these things. This is not a talking. I'm just telling you straight. Something I try to, don't say, but I just got to tell you straight. The thing is before your eyes, you, you can't even, a blind man can see it. It is sad, I'm telling you. It's sad. And people don't want to hear it. The sad thing is that sometimes too, the people don't want to even hear, you know? So it is sad. So for the rest of the time, uh, these, these are the people that, that we are going uh, to have raise their hand. Friday, Brother Friday. Can, you can see. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much. I like the statement that you read that Christ's method alone is the one that will bring true success to his church. Because when we look at the time of Christ, when he came to earth, there was first the kingdom of Babylon, and it fought many wars to rule the world. Then it was taken off by Middle Persia. It used, it used the force. Middle Persia is depicted as having three ribs in the mouth, it killed many people. Then came Greece. Then came Pagan Rome. So Jesus Christ during that period is saying, I'm going to establish a kingdom. He does not have soldiers. He has no army. He has no police. How is he going to establish a kingdom when other kingdoms that have been there have been fighting and killing people? Look at Jesus Christ's ministry. He went and chose disciples who came from Galilee, a land which was regarded as the land of the gentle. People are not educated. Only 12 that's it of people. He says, I'm going to build a kingdom. But look now, how big is that kingdom up to today without Christ using a gun, without using force? Are you getting my point? Yeah, that yeah. Christ like method alone is, yes, just using love. No weapons, no what is just using yeah, love. No weapons, so no see, weapon for, for it by men. Uh, yeah. Yes, <laughs> yes. Just think here in Africa, the missionaries that came to Africa, like a missionary that was sent to Zimbabwe, was Tundifat. He just came alone. But look at the number of Adventists in Zimbabwe. The method that he used are the methods ordained by Christ. So once we follow Christ's method, even a one man, one man can conquer the whole world using Christ's method alone. Where I agree Very with bad, this, yeah. the church now, we are using other skills like Nadab and Abiu. When they oh, got yeah. to the sanctuary, they brought the strange fire uh, and God did not approve of it. There are many skills which the church is using even to, yeah. to fundraise uh -huh. for money. See, they, yeah. use the, yeah. uh, they use these methods that are not good to fundraise for money for God's church. They use many things that are still used by the people in the world. So God's church has its own methods that are unique so that people will see the difference between the two. So we should only focus on Christ's method. And Christ's method, sometimes you, the preacher, you will not see the results like the people were baptized on the Pentecost. It was not because of Peter who preached. Those were the people whom Christ healed. He raised them from the dead. Yes, then now Peter is... They had evidence the of this, what this man did throughout the three and a half years, and they're, they're, they're now seeing the fruits of it. Yes, I want to read something here, then I, 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 give, I give it back to you. I'm going to read from Gospel Workers. Uh, there's something very important on Gospel Workers. It says, uh, the minister stands as God's mouthpiece to the people. And in thought, in word, in act, he is to represent his Lord. When Moses was chosen as the messenger of the covenant, the word was given him, be thou for the people to go the word. That is Exodus 18 verse 19. Today, God chooses men as he chose Moses to be his messengers. 
and the heavy is the war resting on the one who dishonors his holy calling or lowers the standard set before him in the life and labors of the son of God. Just think, brother, you are Moses, and God is telling you, I'm going to take my children that are in Afghanistan. How, how, which method are you going to do to go and take God's children that are in Afghanistan? Yeah, exactly. what, what are you going You think of, let me go to America, FBI, yeah. what, what, so that they can guard me, let me talk to former President Obama, and so, so. You see, you would, you would want to use worldly skills, but God says, no, don't use all those skills. If I send you like Jonah, Jonah never knew that he'll go in the belly of a fish. God's method. He thought of other methods and God says no. So let us rely on God's methods alone and you are going to reap a lot of success. Thank you, brother. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. You know, hey, God, God, God allowed me one time to go to a prison to, uh, to reach a man, you know. <laughs> I was wrongly accused. I didn't do a crime, but I was so mad. I was like, why I had to be in this place, this distinct this place, but there was a man in there. You talk about the story, Jonah. There was a man in there. They asked me, they say, why are you in here? They say, you don't look like a criminal, they say. I said, I told him I'm Adventist. I told him my story and all these things. He said, you, you're Adventist? He says, you know the Bachelor? So it is not me who, who is saving this man. It was work that was done through the Bachelor program. He said, you, you know him? I said, yeah, I know of him, but I do not know him, know him. He's like, hey, you know what? I watch his program. He speaks the truth, I believe. And he says, you know what? When I come out of here... Well, he told me his problem. He says, you know, when I come out of here, I want to go and start the Lord and all these things. And he asked me to pray for him. And I prayed for him and so forth. I never saw him back in my life. But he says, when he come out from there, he's going to church, he says, and give his life, his, his self to God. So you talk about this story with Jonah, you know, we just need to give ourselves to God and God will do, do the rest. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, Providence iPhone. Prudence, Prudence iPhone. Yes, um, I was I was talk, uh, focusing when they talk about the health and the simplicity of how if we read the spirit of prophecy, we cannot go wrong. Because just the other day, I was thinking about Loma Linda. And I was told, oh, Bill, they were, they were building it up. But spirit of prophecy said they must be simple and small and so and bring forth from the cities and bring out to to because it is supposed to be a sanitarium where there, there should not be any drugs being yeah. used in there. We're now recognizing that, as I, again, it is a Seventh-day Adventist sanitarium should be. And we are straying from what the Spirit of Prophecy said. And these are the, some of the things that she's talking about. You see, light are becoming dim. These things are happening inside our own buildings. It's not just only the church, but also the, the, the hospitals that are supposed to be sanitarium to use this method, this simple method to, and to help people. For example, I, I was watching a program with this, um, this lady, Barbara O'Neill, and I've always had some back pains. I just said, just take the ginger, make a poultice and put it on wherever the um, the, it normally good for the um the joints are where you have pains because it have um it helps with um I don't remember the name right now I don't know it's in my head but it cannot come out and I simply put it on my back and I since I put it on my foot and I put it on my back simple ginger put it on your back and it get out it I, it take it away and so I'm just saying look how simple that is I've been going to the doctor for almost so many years. And, uh, and the pain has still been there, no matter what. I've been to chiropractor and all these things. It's still there. And I just simply use the ginger to, and it just pull it out. I felt it, I felt it somewhere else. But she, oh, she also said, if it, it normally travel, so continue to do it. And I'm just saying, as simple as that, the, God, the message of God is simple. And the thing is, sometimes we, we look at the simplicity of it and we want to think it should be bigger than that. And that's why we strain away from the Red Africa. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, you, know, you know, Loma Linda was raised up to uh, train medical missionary evangelists. That's a point, yes. Not uh -huh. doctors only, but the two. Uh, Franz Roberts. Sister Franz. 
Yeah, I'm just going to try and unmute. Okay. Okay, yeah. You know, um, only yesterday we had a, a stewardship um, day in our church. And the gentleman who was doing the stewardship day was saying negative things about vegans and vegetarians. And he was saying that we are pious and self-righteous. And um, you know, I mean, we've got a variety of people sitting there. We've got a visitor, we've got news. I use it, eat me too. I use it, me too, yeah. Uh, members, we've got Mr. Frank, you're network. breaking your network. And, um, okay, okay. Broken. Sorry, Sister Fran, we can't hear you. The network is breaking. He didn't say it once. He, he said it. Uh, I, 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 sorry. We're not understanding Hello? what you're saying. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, but you're breaking, Sister okay. Frank. We can't, we can't figure out what you're saying, really. Oh, what a shame. I know. But we can hear you now. Continue. Okay. Let's hear. Okay. Let's see if we can go again. Well, okay. it came to the point where I had to, I had to address this. Mm. Because he was saying that we have a bad attitude. And I was asking him, is it only vegans and vegetarians that have a bad attitude? Because at the end of the day, what we eat affects our attitudes and the way we, you know, we conduct ourselves. That's just by and by. Mm -hmm. What I really wanted to say is there is nothing new under the sun. What is happening has happened before. And we have to go through this time of, I don't know if we're in the small time of trouble, I know we're not in the big time of trouble and all the rest of it. We have to go through what we're going through in the church. As in the days of Noah, so shall it be. So we really shouldn't expect any difference, should we? From what is happening. No. And we're not living up to the light and the church is dying. What, what is the quote? The church won't fall. Mm. It will never fall. No matter how bad it looks, it's going to stand to the end. And she goes on to say, why? Why can't we bring many into the church? Could you answer that for me? Yeah. If, if she answer it, because if God bring them into um, the church, people bro, will be discouraged by, by what they're seeing. Why they will go we, out. Why can't we bring many into the church? Yeah. We can't, we can't bring many into the church because we would destroy them, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we <laughs> take the yeah, exactly. So... What have I put here? Well, it comes to the point where we mm. you're breaking again. Sister Fran, you're breaking again, darling. Um, followers of Christ have to be bold. Oh. Okay. I think I've said enough anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and so thank much. Thank you for your presentation. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. We want to praise the Lord uh, for his love, his mercy, and to continue to remind us, you know, that Christ does not want us to do the big things or to see things the way so clear for us to move forward. As long as the heart is willing and you, we are saying, here I am, Lord, send me. 
wherever you are in any corner of this world, you'll find something to do. God will send you on errands that you never believe that it is you, it is me that is sending. Why? Because you said in your heart, here I am, Lord, send me. Even if when you feel like you don't have it all, you know, ready, you have not learned all. No, you're going to learn on the job. And that's the God that we serve. When he called the, 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 the disciples, what were they doing? Did they know anything? No, they didn't. They had but to learn. He said, follow me. Follow me. Are we willing to be used? by God in the most simplest way. That's what he wants us to do, to depend on him every step of the way. Thank you, Brother Clement. Um, okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay, um, Elder Friday has shared the account details for, for the people to support him. Again, I want to encourage all of us to buy the Great Controversy book. If you can't buy them, please contribute. I'm gonna share the flyer once again on the link. All the details on how to go about it is on that um, flyer. Contact mm -hmm. the gentleman who's leading out, uh, Brother Tarrant. We had him, we had the wife and himself on the show a couple of weeks ago. We will bring him back again just before uh, the date of the, of the distribution. It's going to be massive. It's such a great opportunity that we should not lose. So I'm encouraging all of us here at AJMM, share with others, come out in numbers to distribute these books during the coronation of the king because Amen. many people are going to be out you know, it's going to be a procession for four days. We cannot lose that opportunity. Many people are coming from different countries to come and camp at, in London. Yeah, can it's you going imagine to that? Be big. It's going yeah. to be massive. So let us take full advantage of it. Okay? Yeah. So, um, somebody has shared follow the Lord Jesus and take on his character. Absolutely, Sister France. And sorry, you have www.xo.uk. You don't yeah. have your name, but you have shared. Yeah. I then yeah, saw like... the third angel said, my accompanying angel, fearful is his work. Awful is his mission. He is, he is the angel that is to select the wheat from the tares and seal or bind the wheat for the heavenly Ghana. These things should engross the whole mind, the whole attention. Amen, 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 amen. Okay, I think we are coming to, the, to a close. And Brother Clement, yes, I yes, sir. To summarize and pray for us. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't hear you, what is it? I just, <laughs> I'd like you to summarize and close. Uh, yeah. Ah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, the first thing, you know, we, as we said before, we first must recognize that we are sinners. We can't save nobody. We need the righteousness of Christ for us. When we have that, um, then we follow God in his way of doing things. And we will see the success through conversion of people um, to the truth and not just numbers. Yeah. That's basically summary. Righteousness by faith. God is doing it through us, for us, for us, and through us to other people. And um, it is who we are that will really show to people that there is a God in heaven who can save men from sin. And it will create faith that they may want to have that which we have and to um, be as God is. So that's basically summary. So uh, yes. let's pray and let's go. The Father in heaven, we thank you for this study this morning. Thank you for everyone who are on here, all those who contributed. 
we know there's more to be said, which was not um, expounded upon or wasn't even mentioned. But Lord, you know, you know the hearts of us. You know what is there. You know what is burdening our souls. You know everything, Lord. So we give all these things to you and we ask you to take control. You are in control, but we just ask you, not because we do not believe you're in control, but for you to remind us and assure ourselves in you that you are in control. So bless everyone who are here as we go about our daily um, activities. Give us a wonderful week and bring us again at the time appointed. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Brother Clement. May yes, God continue to bless you. I want to thank each and every one of you who have come up and uh, be with us on AJMM this morning. Please come again. We are here every Sunday, 11 a.m. UK time. May God bless you and may you have a wonderful weekend.